All right, welcoming you guys. We got the One Piece Chapter 1125 post game. Uh, we're going to be going through the full spoiler comment section, seeing what you guys have to say about this chapter and just have a little fun discussion. So that being said, let's get right to it. All right, so the first comment we have says, I said this already, but dang, am I jealous of Garling taking care of York? Yeah, I would say out of all the Gorosei, Garling probably has the best job. Uh, but outside of this, though, I wonder how he's going to handle his scientific ventures moving forward. And with York, she's kind of like a glaring weakness for Garling, right? I feel like once somebody attacks York or once York dies or anything of the sort, Emu is going to hold him responsible. So York is kind of like a blessing and a curse in my opinion. All right, so the first comment says, Garling coming in does feel like the military implementing martial law. Like, quote, your politics have failed. I'll take it from here and then deploys the knights. Yes, yes, yes. I am actually a big fan of this idea. And I, I brought this up to my friend Brago as well. But now that Garling is here, I wouldn't be surprised if as a way to flex on the other Gorsei, he says, hey guys, all those problems we have here at Marie Joie, don't worry, I've already deployed the Holy Knights. And maybe the other Gorsei aren't on board. They're like, whoa, Garling, that's a little bit too quick. You know, we're old men, you know, slow it down. And then Garling is like, no, no, no. They listen to me, they're going. Like, that's really what it feels like here, right? Garling, in a way, like he feels like the most authoritarian character in the room. And the craziest part about saying that is the fact that he's in the room with the Gorosei. Well, I guess he's a Gorosei now too, but yeah, I think Garling is definitely gonna slam his meat down on the table. And that might even be why Jupiter in this chapter is very shocked, right? Jupiter, out of all the Gorosei members, like they're all shocked, but Jupiter's specifically shown staring at the camera, you know, the shadings on him, the sweat beads are dripping down. And it's like, yeah, I, I think Jupiter knows what Garling is capable of. And this could tie back to Jupiter being the youngest Gorsei as well, right? Maybe he's worked alongside Garling and saw how brutal he is, like even for a celestial dragon. All right, so the comment below says, when Garling deploys the knight's emu might buff them like the Gorosei monster forms. And here's the thing, I completely agree. And I think that might've actually already happened. Because when you think about the Holy Knights and Garling, for example, they know about Emu's existence. We have people who've shown up to the flower room who we still don't know of yet. I'm assuming they're Holy Knights, maybe it's related to Garling or whatever. But either way, to get promoted to Holy Knight and Gorosei, I feel like you have to know of Emu's existence. And if Emu is trusting you with that title, then in my opinion, it would only make sense if he gave you powers to back up that title. Also, I just want to address this real quick, but I have indeed tripled down on the notion that Emu is in fact a guy. Uh, of course, we had the Ivankov thing, but people were still kind of up in the air because that was 900 years ago. But with Toei approaching the first few Emu episodes and you know where we see them speak, they have indeed casted a guy to voice act Emu. So, you know, crazy times we're living in. Excited to see those episodes. But yeah, I love both of these comments and I completely, completely agree with them. All right, so this one says, if Doberman, an absolute justice believer, reacted like this, Akainu now has a high chance of doing something about it. And then right below, they say, Doberman asked, is it true? Like behind closed doors kind of thing. And Saturn simply reacted with die. Yeah, like I said, it's it's not the best response from Saturn. It doesn't make any sense why he'd do this. You know, these guys are your close confidants. These are the vice admirals. Yeah, they suck, but you know, they're they're there to help you, man. Like Doberman, he was so polite. You know, I was rereading the chapter and Doberman is so polite. He said, hey, Saint Saturn, as a loyal and humble servant of the world government, I gotta ask, you know, like, is some of it true? And that's the thing, Doberman said, is some of what Vegapunk said true? He didn't say all of it, he said some. And Saturn blew this guy up. Yeah, man, it's straight up a horrible look for the world government. And I do think Akainu will wake up eventually and realize that, hey, maybe Dragon was right and there's no justice in the military. You know, there's no justice here in the Navy as long as we follow the world government, because that's what Dragon said. And that line... You know, Dragon doesn't have a lot of lines, but that one really stuck with me, right? Dragon said he quit the Marines because he saw no justice there. The minute Akainu and Doberman and all these other VAs and Marines and Admirals, the minute they realize that maybe they don't actually follow true justice because of the Gorosei and because of the world government, I do think there will be that separation. And I gotta say, 
I feel bad for Akainu. You know, Akainu said it back at the start of Egghead Island, but he was like, man, what a horrible time to become Fleet Admiral. And he was right, man. The worst is yet to come, Akainu. The worst is yet to come. Marine says, quick, call a doctor. Rational person, bro. His head is gone, in reference to Doberman. And right below, it says, it occurred to me that Sanji and Luffy both got their heads blasted too. Both are alive. Admittedly, Luffy was in tune mode and Sanji is a cyborg. And yeah, uh, here's the thing too. You know, this is based off of the full spoilers. And in the spoilers, they said that Doberman's head exploded. Uh, so we kind of thought that his head was gone. But now that the chapter's out, we know that Doberman's head is still attached to his body. Uh, he still got blasted, mind you, but his head is still attached. So I do think there is a good chance that he will survive. I mean, look at Doberman, brother. Look at Doberman. He has like a thousand scars on his face. He has more scars on his body than the Gorsei. You know, like, my God, there's no way that a simple blast would do him in. A vice admiral, mind you. There's no, I refuse to believe it. Emu says, you let Joy Boy go. Saturn says, we got punk records. Punk records goes flying. Saturn says, we got the mother flame. And then Emu says, I'm replacing you with Garling. You can look cool in a flashback or in a fanfic because I'm killing you now. The funniest part about losing punk records is that Saturn didn't even see that happen. Like that happened after he died. Like as he was catching fire, punk records was being shot up into the sky. But you know, obviously Saturn was inside so he couldn't see what was happening. So maybe that's for the best. You know, Saturn died thinking that he obtained the three things he wanted on this island. So hey, kudos to Saturn, man. He's dying high, I guess. Saturn taking his anger out on someone he can actually beat in a reference to Doberman, bro. Yeah, I mean, someone he can actually beat and somebody who actually respects him, which is the craziest part. You know, like, hey, Doberman is your boy, dude. Like, you control the Marines. Yes, they're insects, but they're loyal insects. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Gorosei group chat caught me off guard. It actually is a group chat with Emu being the admin LMAO. And the response to this, which I gotta say, this guy's had three responses back to back. And I'm not like cherry picking either. He actually has like the most like likes as well. And I, I don't try to go too deep into the reply sometimes, but when I see like that top one that has like an insane amount of likes, I'm like, okay, I'll read it. So it, it's crazy. Like this guy's, uh, he's everywhere, dude. You can't, you can't avoid him. He's dropping nothing but banger comments. Uh, but yeah, uh, Gorsei group chat is crazy. Um, that's how I describe the telepathy that all the Gorsei members have. And I do feel bad. Now that a day has passed since the chapters dropped, I feel really bad for the Gorsei in, in a weird way. Not, not like I'm like uh, crying for him, but like Saturn was their boy. Like we don't know how old the other Gorsei members are. We can assume they're also immortal, you know, 100, 200, 300 years plus old. But these guys have most likely been around longer than the Straw Hats, than any crew in the world. The Straw Hats, when you really count it out, they've only been together for like a year, if you don't count the time skip. A year. Saturn's been there for 200 plus years, brother. Like, they live in the same building, the same island. So yeah, I, I, I kind of feel bad that Saturn's gone like this. It makes sense as to why, you know, this could explain why Jupiter was so shocked. You know, maybe he was best friends with Saturn. You know, Marcus Mars said, ain't no way when Garling walked in. Like, uh, that's got to be a little bit sad. Like, they lost their Usopp. They lost their Frankie. They lost their Chopper. Like, my God. I don't actually think we'll get too much insight as to how the Gorsei are feeling about this whole situation about Saturn. But I do think it'd be really cool if we got one or two scenes where, you know, they get together and they're like, hey, maybe if we would have just put in a little bit more effort, Saturn would still be alive for bingo night. The aura on Garling is crazy. He pretty much just walked in and little broed everyone. This week's spoilers definitely feels like fan fiction. And then the comment below says, besides V Nasujiro, he's the only one that we've really seen any combat potential. And that potential is literally tied to Shanks, which means hockey and probably regeneration. And he probably already has a form, which means God Knights probably do too. And I agree. Um, as far as, you know, Nasujuro, I, I feel like all the Gorsei have looked pretty decent, outside of Saturn, of course, you know, so Saturn aside, because he's only gotten slapped like 10 times and hurt his own people. Uh, but I, I did like the feats of the other Gorsei. Uh, they weren't exactly overwhelming in my opinion, but they were still nice. Like, I think it was cool when Jupiter like sucked in the air and sucked ships back, you know, sucked in the Seraphim. That was awesome. Uh, Venus, 
I kind of wish he just killed Atlas a lot sooner. I, I don't think the explosion was necessary, but of course, you know, Atlas got her flowers with that. And then there's Warkity, who I thought performed pretty solid overall. Uh, my only thing with Warkity is just a personal thing, but I, I just don't like boars. So, you know, seeing him like walking around, you know, stampeding, it's like, okay, it looks a little bit silly. Uh, but yeah, I, I do think the Gorosei outside of Saturn have looked okay. You know, the thing with Saturn, you know, people always draw back to power scaling, like, oh, like, people want a lot out of them. But it's not even just power scaling with Saturn. You know, I, I could accept if, you know, maybe one or two things happen and he just didn't look great. But Saturn, time and time again in this arc, hasn't looked that well. I mean, like, the other Gorsi members, at least there's one thing we could tie back to. Like, Marcus Mars, for example, he blew up multiple buildings with a crazy bolo breath-ish attack. And then he went over there and then he got flung by Luffy. It's like, okay, you know, at least we had one good scene. Same with Warkity. Luffy couldn't hurt him with Red Rock multiple times. And then all of a sudden, Emmett little bros him. And it's like, okay, you know, that's fair. You know, give and take, give and take. Uh, you could say the same with all these other Gorsi members as well, except for Saturn. Saturn hasn't had a single powerful feat, in my opinion. And then outside of that, narratively, he just has not been that impressive. You know, like, even in this chapter, we learned about the thing 200 years ago where... He let Emmett go. He wanted to research him some more. And after 200 years, not only did he not learn how to activate Emmett or anything about him, but Emmett became a detriment to the Gorosei. So it's like, yeah, I mean, Saturn's portrayal, man, it's not the best. And I think Oda did it on purpose as well. Like, it's it's not like a thing where, you know, the fandom hates Saturn. No, no, no. I, I think Oda made it very apparent that Saturn was the whipping boy in this arc, which... You know, to be fair, he got what he deserved, right? For what he did with Kuma, Ginny, and God's Valley. Like, he definitely got what he deserved. And I think that's the moral of the story. You know, that's what Oda wanted to tell us. Like, this guy's a loser. He's a bum. And Oda treated him exactly like that. So as far as this first part, though, uh, yeah. This week's spoilers were crazy. Um, you know, normally, I, I always hype up chapters, you know, it, it's not like a thing where like, oh, I'm a YouTuber, I want to hype it up. But, you know, I genuinely do love One Piece, so I get pretty excited no matter what really happens. But this week, brother, th this week, you know, I, I brought out the clickbait title saying that this is an 11 out of 10. And that is only because I wholeheartedly believe that this chapter was amazing all the way through. There wasn't a single page in this chapter that wasn't meaningful or open-ended or was cause for speculation like there's so much to talk about with this one chapter and i think it was great and it's also like vindicating as well with saturn like i said like you know people very mixed feelings about saturn and oda agreed you know emu agreed so i, I thought there's a lot of good things here this definitely 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 felt like fan fiction those who protect scum are worse than this scum they protect gorosei leveled up the anti-kakashi <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, dude, Garlic, man, there's a lot of clout behind this man. And I think him getting promoted to Gorosei feels really good because when it comes to the Holy Knights, you know, people are wondering where they stand in terms of power. You know, are they weaker than the Gorosei? Are they stronger? Where is Oda going to put these guys? You know, it always felt weird because Garling was the Supreme Commander. He wasn't a Gorosei member. But now seeing Garling level up, it's like, yo, like this is insane hype for the rest of the Holy Knights, man, especially if... Garling walking into this room makes people feel like he's the strongest. And I want to ask that question, you know, as it stands right now, without any feats on the board, do you guys think Garling is the strongest Gorosei member? Because based on vibes alone, that's how I've always felt. Like the minute we saw this guy, you know, posed up at Marie Joie, I was like, he looks really powerful. As far as the other Gorosei members, I was like, oh, you know, it's kind of kind of 50 50. You know, if you remember me back in the day, I called them geriatric patients. And, you know, that was kind of like a good meme. But yeah, like now that Garling is a part of the Gorosei, like he does have that aura to him. He's, he's got sunglasses on, man. He's inside. What is he doing? This guy's an anomaly. We got a comment right here that says Oda doesn't kill characters. And then Oda says, let's kill Vagapunk and Saturn because why not? And the comment below says we are in the final saga. Oda isn't pulling any punches from now on. And yeah, dude, like the gloves are off, you know, the story's wrapping up people. They gotta die. You know, people are gonna have to kick that bucket for the story to progress. And now that we're here, you know, now that Oda is being forced to do it in this final stretch, he's gonna do it. Uh, as far as Vegapunk goes, they're not dead though. Like Stella technically isn't here yet, but his brain is still here and he lives on with the devil fruit. So you know, I, I, I like to think that the Vegapunks haven't truly died. Like we saw Edison kick the bucket in this chapter and then Edison got rebuilt into the Megapunk. So yeah, it's pretty cool seeing them, you know, still around. 
And I feel like for Vegapunk as well, because I've, I've seen people calling Vegapunk and the Megapunk a little bit of a cop out, like, oh, Oda doesn't kill anybody. But the thing is, is that Vegapunk is the world's smartest scientist. Coming into this arc, the guy showed us six different bodies of himself. So I, I think it makes sense if there were a character to survive that it would be Vegapunk, especially since it's not technically him. And not to mention, but Oda has been building this up for a while now. Like when Marcus Mars first showed up to Punk Records, he looked at the giant brain and he said, hey, what the hell is this? What is death? And then go to 1123. And the minute Vegapunk was talking about, you know, dying and, you know, about the Buster Call and everything, he said, hey, what is death? You know, like with this thing right here, with this brain, what even constitutes it? Okay, so going down to the replies, we got a couple more. Uh, this guy says, yep, he's going to keep the deaths coming. And then right below that, this is the one I kind of wanted to get to. Uh, by characters, people mean Straw Hats and Straw Hat adjacent characters. Not a guy who split his consciousness from his body and is technically still alive and a villain. We'll see if Oda really goes there. And yeah, th this is the distinguishment we have to make um, because I, I agree with this as well. I don't believe any of the Straw Hats are going to die. I, I don't think Oda's going to pull that punch. I believe all the Straw Hats will achieve their dreams. Maybe they die after they achieve their dreams, but they're going to make it to the very end. Like, Usopp's not dying. You know, Nami's not going to die. Rob's not going to die. I, I'd i be very shocked if Oda actually did that. Like, like genuinely shocked. Um, I, I know Oda said that he doesn't like killing characters because he wants them to show up for the big feast. Uh, so I do think Straw Hat and Jason won't die either. But as far as like villains go, right, like Saturn, for example, people who won't attend, you know, the giant feast Luffy will have at the end of the story. Uh, yeah, like like they, they can totally die. OK, so I just got to say, but apologies in advance. But I I eat up Doberman comments, especially jokes like this one right here. It says Doberman saved the One Piece society. And then this one says Emu now to anoint the new Gorosei Doberman. Doberman? <laughs> yeah, just yeah. imagine that. Like, Emu wanted to promote Doberman, bring him up to the Celestial Dragon rank, and then we come to find out that Saturn attacked him. The sad irony of the Gorosei is that they are each slaves themselves if Emu has the ability to end them in an instant. Therefore, every action they commit has to benefit Emu. Although they are immortal, it's a pretty trash existence if we're being honest. Some Kratos-style soul-selling definitely occurred. Yeah, I mean, with the Gorse too, like, we don't know how often Emu executes one of them. Of course, we do have Jupiter, who seems to be the youngest Gorse member, so maybe it happened just recently. But I agree, right? Like, the minute Emu says, you're trash, you're thrown in the trash bin. What I definitely want to see more of right now is just how has Emu reacted to situations in the past? Does he always lash out and execute people on the spot? Or was he more lenient back in the day? Uh, I think that's the main question. Because right now, like, you gotta admit, this is a very stressful moment for the world government. Celestial dragons don't have food. The revolutionary is about to attack. Sun God Nika has arisen once again. Joy Boy's hockey literally omitted from Egghead Island thanks to a piece of rope. So, you know, this could just be Emu on a bad day. You know, maybe, you know, every other day, the Goros, they can do whatever they want. But today specifically, Emu just was not having it. I don't think that's the case. I just wanted to argue for the opposite side in a manner. Uh, but yeah, overall though, I agree. Uh, the Gorosei, they are slaves themselves to Emu. The failure to defeat Luffy, the new Joy Boy, seems to be the main reason. But the other Gorosei also failed and let him escape and were not fired. But their failure was in part because Emmeth was there and used the original Joy Boy's hockey to send all the Gorosei, with the exception of Saturn, back to Murray's Raw. This wouldn't have happened if Saturn had checked to see if the robot was destroyed 200 years ago. Instead, he was fooled by the scientist he was supposed to control. And again, this happened with Vegapunk betraying the world government. I imagine Emu may have considered all of this and therefore punished only Saturn, despite all the Gorsei being in Egghead Island, since even their failure can be attributed to Saturn. And yes, and of course, with this chapter, we got more insight as to uh, what happened with the robot 200 years ago. And we see that Saturn is the one who wanted that robot to survive. So, you know, th that just makes matters even worse here. And yeah, like, I'm not a big fan of punishing all the Gorsi members. While they were all on the island, this all stems back to Saturn. Like, it goes back to what we talked about with Garling, you know, like Garling. His weak point right now is York. You know, he has to watch over her and make sure she doesn't mess up and that nothing bad happens to her. Saturn had Vegapunk, and Vegapunk time and time again has won up this man. You know, Saturn, I do think this entire event all goes back to him. This was his mission from the jump. They sent Saturn with Kizaru, and he, he fumbled. He fumbled. 
You know, like he summoned the other Gorosei as a helpline, but at the end of the day, if the helpline doesn't work, you can't blame them. You know, it's it's your job. Garling already shows that he is different from the other Gorosei. He will take charge of things. I think he's going to turn into some kind of mythological wolf. Maybe Fenrir. And yes, you know, I, I don't often self-plug, but if you want to check out my Garling theory, check it out right Okay, I, I can't link it in this video, but it, it's linked down below. I'll make it the pinned comment because I do have a whole theory video talking about how I believe Garling is 100% going to be a werewolf or a lycanthrope or, you know, Fenrir, uh, some mythological wolf type being because of his hair, because of his connection to Shanks and all that good stuff. So if you want to check out my thoughts, check it out down below. I just realized that figuratively speaking, bringing Garling, the moon, closer to Emu, the earth, brings floods across the planet. I've never felt terrified of the Gorosei, but bringing in this proven, ruthless, and powerful geezer did make me a lot more anxious for everyone who's affected. And yeah, I didn't even think about that. The Earth being closer to the moon would cause tides to change and obviously rising waters. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. I like that. Uh, but yeah, I'm not terrified of Garling. I'm more excited because, hey, as somebody who likes all villains, right? I I'm a villain lover. That's why I like the Admirals. You know, I like any villain in any series. So seeing Garling, this madman, showing up with the swagger, you know, he's coming in, getting the promotion. He's a ruthless killer. He killed Mosgard, right? He executed that guy. And it's like, yo, I want to see Garling put in some work. You know, l let's get a little bit more ruthless, you know? And here's the thing with villains. The more we build them up, the more dastardly they are the better it's going to feel when we defeat them. You know, because Garling's not going to survive. You know, Garling's totally going to get defeated by the end of the story. So until that happens, build this man up to the very peak so that when we break him down, it feels rewarding. Okay, so this one's pretty funny. He says, honey, I think this Marine job isn't for me. Said by some new Marine recruit who was sent to Egghead Island. Yeah. I mean, that's why I kind of feel bad for some of these guys, because, bro, most of these guys just have a regular gun and maybe a sword, right? And then you're over here running around fighting the straw hats. You know, you got a buster call happening. You got your bosses over here in crazy yokai demon forms. And it's like, yeah, maybe the marine life wasn't cut out for me. You know, like, unless you're a Kobe or Helmeppo. Yeah, I, I don't know how many of these marines actually decide to have this job, go through one of these events, and then decide to keep it, right? One thing that's always fun to think about is the Marine perspective on Luffy. Like, imagine you don't know him. Like, you, you've seen the posters, you've heard the stories, and then you show up on the island, you hear a guy laughing, black lightning, you know, coming out of the ground, the ground is bouncing, he's beating up your bosses, and you're like, wow. Yeah, maybe I should just go home. Yeah, maybe I take sabbatical after this little trip. Yeah, like, it's, it, it's a cursed existence to be just some random marine. And then cross guild. My, my god, cross guild? Like, man, forget the pirates. Some random civilian's just gonna put you down at the end of the day. Yeah, it, it's a horrible time to be a marine, especially if you don't have any powers whatsoever. I mean, dude, the VAs aren't even safe. The vice admirals aren't even safe. My god, what a time we live in, huh? So this comment says, Imagine Garling hitting the Gorosei with what's up, old farts. Hey, he might as well have. He might as well have. The way he just simply took Saturn's chair in this chapter and just, you know, threw his feet up. He pretty much just said this with his actions, dude. He pretty much just did. All right, so now for the last comment. Emu really destroyed Blackbeard's plan to use Saturn's appearance in the Holy Land. Emu has seen Van Auger flexing on him, talking about we want the world, and instantly called Garling to take his spot. And the comment below says they could potentially use his transformation to control the Seraphims. And yeah, that could be a thing. Uh, we don't know why Blackbeard wanted Saturn's form. You know, I feel like the Holy Land is like the most basic one. And I agree with that. You know, that plan is dead in the water right now. But outside of the Holy Land, what else could Blackbeard do with this transformation? I think he could totally go to like some, you know, unknown country and, you know, mop up civilians using Saturn's transformation if the world doesn't find out about his death. I think that's pretty plausible. And one question that comes out of it is whether or not Devon can utilize Saturn's Gyuki form. Because as it stands, we don't really know the extent of Devon's powers, right? If she can mimic Saturn's, you know, crazy spider form herself, then I definitely think that'd be pretty broken. Uh, but I don't think that was their main purpose here. I, I do think they were trying to deceive somebody. 
I just don't know who. Like, I, I doubt Oda's just going to say, hey, you know, the plan fumbled. So it's going to come back at some point. I, I just don't know with this one, man. I, I really don't. As far as controlling the Seraphim, that could be huge, but it would beg the question of why didn't they capture the Seraphim here while they were on the island, right? Saturn was preoccupied. Um, the Seraphim were actually in bubbles at the time of Van Auger and Devon's arrival on the island. So theoretically, they could have just popped in, took the Seraphim and left, and the Seraphim wouldn't be able to fight back, you know, because they're in bubbles and because we have the Saturn transformation. So I, I, I do wonder what Blackbeard is scheming. Like, what the hell is going on with- Like, that is something that still, like, keeps me up to this day. Like, what is Devon going to do with Saturn's form? Uh, but hey, with that being said, though, guys, thank you oh so much for commenting. You know, obviously, I love having these discussions. I love seeing what you guys have to say about this latest chapter. Uh, we will do more of these in the future, of course. And hey, I will catch you guys later. Let me know all your thoughts about what we talked about down below. And peace out, y'all.